Okay, today we are going to do a tutorial on how to draw bird wings. Uh, occasionally I add them to my work um, as a sort of like a fantasy addition uh, to my female characters. Uh, sometimes I put wings on the heads um, or around the face. I actually have an image I did of one where her hair is entirely made of wings um, and uh, feathers. So this is kind of um, just kind of helping you to understand how wings work, how they're drawn, and how you can kind of um, do the feathers and graphite. So I have two positions here. I have the general spread position and one where it's starting to fold in. Uh, where it's held sort of at a crook, I guess you could call it. Um, in general, these are pretty simple to draw. Um, the general shapes of the wings, you can actually start out um, with a line right here and then sort of go out and you can do where just sort of like a, a rounded curve like that and then do another rounded curve just like that and then eventually you can go back and actually erase this and uh, draw the wing feathers spread out like fingers but that's the general shape of the wing that's simple um, those simple curves and uh, a few angles up on the top there um, and to separate it just in general from the body that you have right now just as a general exercise you can start with the line where your wing will be growing from and then go from there. Same thing with this one. So I'm going to erase these lines for right now. But generally speaking that is how a wing is constructed. I'm not going to go into the actual anatomy of a bird wing because that would take a little bit too much time here. Because um, <clears throat> if you're just doing something for fantasy, you don't necessarily need to know um, how to draw the actual anatomy of it, the in internal bone structure and all that. I mean, you can definitely look at it, and I'll link um, some pages that show you that. But for right now, for the sake of this tutorial, I am just going to show you how to do the general shape and the feathers so that it um, knocks a little bit out of the way. And then um, I will link to those relevant pages so you can get a look of how the actual physical bird wing is constructed um, bones musculature and all of that so but for this general uh, tutorial I'll just be going over how you do them in general um, <clears throat> now the first part of this is the top wings not top wings I'm sorry the top feathers around this area and they're called the down feathers and uh, they are generally the part of uh, the wing that is right at the top there. Um, they're sort of the feathers that you can barely see any definition in. And um, it's almost like a little finger it starts right here and then goes out with the same sort of curve and then dips down here again. But that's your general shape for that area. You can do a little bit of feathers here up toward this area and this is where it would blend back into the body of a bird or wherever you're adding it to whatever kind of animal you're adding it to or person whatever you know and then just put a little bit hints of feathers not too much not like these feathers down here which are the wings uh, wing feathers um, coverts and such those have a lot more definition to them so you'll start to notice that um, the ones on the edge here actually do have a little bit more of a shape to them, just on this area here. <clears throat> and then the second part, the layer just underneath here, um, these are called middle primaries, middle primary coverts. Uh, these are going to start right about here and they spread out like fingers 
Again, the general curve you're going to follow. And that smooths out. Gets thinner in this area. And then they actually dip down all the way so that these feathers come out in their own little layer. And there's some feathers here. Sorry if I have to keep clearing my throat. I've had something with that this morning. And then you just add lines for the hints of feathers that are sort of stacked against each other. And then um, there's this layer here. This is actually separate from this area here. And these are primary coverts. Actually, I think, um, no, that's not the right term for them. But uh, these are secondaries. This area is secondaries. These are primaries. apologize if I get any of the terminology a little bit wrong. I'm just a little rusty on it. I don't normally concern myself with the terminology when I'm actually drawing it, so I just know what they look like and that's what I go with. Very visually oriented, so some of the information may escape me, but I know what they are, I know how they look, and that's the general gist of what I do, so I may end up a little rusty on the terminology. Now these guys here are your primaries. These are going to have a little more definition. You might actually see the quill in the feathers with these. And these are actually drawn almost individually. Um, obviously you would already have some um, of the primaries kind of spread out on the edge here. But when you go in, you can actually outline some of them individually. Another thing to note too when you're doing um, bird wings, especially if you do them in color, if ever you do them um, where the inner wing is actually showing, the inner wing colors are a lot duller than the top of the wing um, on the other side, the general side that's facing you when you look at a flying bird. Um, the inner wing the part that they fold into themselves, that's generally going to be duller on most birds. Uh, some birds are a little different. They're actually quite vibrant. Um, that generally goes for parrots and such, but um, most of the time when you see birds' inner wings, they tend to have a duller plumage than they do on the other side. But that's your general construction here. Um, now the quill will actually come down the middle of these feathers. And that's that um, sort of stick-like thing that grows in the center of the feather. It holds all the um, filaments together and all. It's actually very strange. They actually grow on the bird and they look very uncomfortable. But once they're, they grow out of that quill, they look really beautiful. I know this because I actually had a bird for a while and um, I used to watch them grow over time and it was very interesting to see. It looks very uncomfortable for them though and I imagine it is. Their skin is also very delicate. Now <clears throat> that's generally how you draw a wing just in general. Now with the feathers um, if you want to add <clears throat> The definition where you can actually see some of the filaments on the, uh, the way that the feathers go, um, what you're going to do is you're going to do angled um, strokes on each of the feathers. Um, I'm only going to do the primaries so that you won't get all caught up doing the rest of them. Now you do it angular from the quill.
and on the other side you would actually do the opposite direction, opposite angle. doing the one angle for now <clears throat> and you can actually leave one side blank if you really want to but if you do want to have um, more of that effect showing I can actually draw a separate feather right here so that I can kind of show you how it looks you would do like we did on the other feathers and then you do that and you would just do a little bit of a hint of it um, and leave some white space in between the quill the line for the quill and where you start those little filament lines so that way you have space where you can see where there's actually a quill there and you can actually, if you draw this actually bigger, you can actually draw the actual quill um, and make it more defined. But generally, that's how you do it. Um, I, I do it that way. I've been doing it that way for some time. It's a very simple way to do something like that. Um, it's easy, but it adds great effect. And I'll just finish up these here. So most of the time, um, a lot of the definition you're going to see is going to be in the wing coverts and the primaries. Um, the areas on the upper wing you're not going to see as much because those feathers are actually quite small they don't have um, at, uh, at least far from the eye they don't have a whole lot of definition when you're actually drawing them they almost look like fur in a way but yeah that's how you do a wing stretched out and then I'll move on to the wing beneath me. Not beneath me, but um, below this one. And we can do that. Okay. So a lot of the same general structure Again, with the curves that define the general shape of the feathers um, and the construction of the wing. Okay, you're going to go and you're going to do the same sort of um, layers that you did with the first one. And then we can start with the top here. And there's a lot of poses that the wing can actually do, so um, look at a lot of bird photos and kind of get a feel for how they work. Sometimes you can kind of um, fly by the seat of your pants to kind of make them do what you want, but in general it's good to look at something in reality to kind of get it accurate, because if you have something looking a bit odd somebody might notice it and then you might notice it and then you're going to be really annoyed by the fact that you didn't get it right later on so yeah so same general feathers are in the same place the 
this wing is actually a little bit stretchier. It's from a different kind of bird, but it's the same general pose I wanted to kind of do um, to show how the wings actually work. And some birds have shorter wings than others, shorter and broader. Um, some wings are actually longer and a little bit thinner. Um, that's another thing to keep um, an eye on visually. Just, you know, if you use references or the design of feathers and uh, wings, kind of keep an eye on and decide, you know, what would work for you or whatever you're doing to kind of get a feel for how something is going to work in the reality that you've made. So again, we'll do second layer here. I often see um, these primaries often um, referred to as almost fingers when they spread out and they do. They're pointy but um, they do have that similar general kind of behavior where they spread out and they look like they could be fingers on a bird. So that's another thing that's interesting about um, wings Actually, I think I did this too short. It needs to be a little lower. to more of the primaries. These are secondaries on this side of the wing. And when you get to the second half, they are primaries. So that's your general line work. Then you can go in and add the quills. If you want to do the same effect as you did here. And they get less and less visible as you go in. And a word about shadows, um, when you're up between the layers, I would just add a tiny bit of shadow. You don't have to go very dark, um, just a little bit, just a hint, because feathers are kind of odd, that they're, they're very thin in material and substance, so unless you've got a whole lot of them um, really laying um, on top of each other and where they're spread out uh, you can kind of see a little bit but I wouldn't go too far deep with the shadows I would just do something like a hint of shadow just so you don't overwhelm 
what you're doing. One thing that might help uh, with establishing some shadow or hints of it is maybe um, darkening the line work in those areas. Maybe that would help while not overwhelming uh, with the rest of the image. So that's the first part of um, doing wings just these two poses and you can do that same effect with the upper coverts just the same if you want to um, I'm just doing the bottom the primaries and coverts here or not primaries and coverts but um, primaries and secondaries just to show the effect so that you understand there's different layers and you can kind of see them more clearly because if I do do that effect on all of them it's going to be more time consuming and I don't want to take away from uh, teaching you these effects and the shapes in general of um, the wings. So I'm going to do a few more poses and then we can move on. Okay, this is one more pose. Uh, more of a curved sort of uh, pose for the wing. Um, sometimes you'll see birds kind of stretch out their wings and then stretch them uh, before themselves where it's almost like a curve um, and with that you'll do the general curve like I showed you before except you're going to stop short and then you're going to do almost a triangular shape and then you can go and you know define some of the fingers of the wings and then um, you can go and do your layers of uh, feathers here just like you did in the previous. Now with this there'll be more shadow especially in this area here um, because these obviously the half of the wing is kind of covering that area. Now, these are just kind of hints of feathers, what I'm doing here, like I did in the beginning. And you can go as detailed or as simple with them as you like. It all depends on the person and what you're aiming for in your artwork. Um, generally, I would say when you're practicing, you don't have to go all out. Um, if you want something much more realistic, you can definitely um, do as much detail as you would like and just experiment with it. But there's a lot of techniques on doing feathers, um, and I'm just showing you the ones that I use. Um, uh, I use a combination of simple and detailed, so I try not to overwhelm myself or whoever I'm teaching. I'm going to do the bottom here. some of these feathers in this pose might actually stick out a bit because um, again it's a stretchy wing pose so you're going to see a little more <clears throat> of these stacked feathers sort of stick out of their alignment a little bit maybe not all the way like that but some of it you're going to notice And then with this part of the wing here, same little area here. I have added the shadows. A lot of this is cross-hatching, um, 
mostly the same sort of thing I did with um, the wings. Uh, I added a lot more of the shadow in here. And again, I'll go over what I did. A lot of your shadow is going to be in here, underneath the layers. And you can put a little bit of shadowing in here. Not too much because uh, there's not a whole lot in there. And just between the layers is where I would do your shadows, especially on this sort of pose. Um, and especially when you get up into this area. Um, not so much down on this area because the wing, this wing tip is actually farther away from this part of the wing. But mostly in here where the general curve is happening, I would put more shadow in there. Again, between the layers, um, you can do a little bit more definition between some of the feathers. Um, but that's generally what I would do. Uh, that really the best way to kind of do this sort of a wing. Um, that's how you would put shadow in there. And then I'm going to go over one more wing position. And this is the completely folded wing. So let me get, uh... But in general, that, what I'm looking at right now, is a wing at rest. And this is what would um, be a bird basically having their wing completely folded against their back. You're going to start with more of a, uh, almost a teardrop shape. Um, again, there's going to be little pokey things out for where you have your layers of feathers, where they stick out a little bit. It's going to be almost, um, if you know what the shape of a chicken breast is, you can kind of do that shape with this as a general rule. Um, and then just have it ducktail sort of that way. And then with your layers, you're going to start from up here. And this is going to be your top layer of feathers. Again, you can do a little bit of hint of smaller feathers in here. Then your second layer. And this can be actually kind of confusing, especially when they do have um, their wings folded. Because uh, some of the feathers, um, they take sort of a different alignment almost, some of them, especially towards the end. Um, so I would definitely look at a few uh, photographs of birds at rest, just to kind of get yourself familiar with how birds' feathers sort of align once they're folded back in a rest position just to kind of make sure you get all your feathers aligned correctly if you really want to do that. It's one thing if you're doing a bird and um, but like if you do add wings to something that's not quite real um, definitely try to shoot for accuracy with the reality that you do have um, before you with um, things that do exist. It's, it's helpful when you're trying to get accuracy in something that otherwise does not exist. So it's always helped me, um, and I definitely suggest using references of animals that do exist. That way, if you are creating something that doesn't exist, you can base it off something that's convincing. I've been doing that for years, and it does help. I, I mean, it really does. It may not be perfect but at least you have a general basis to work from um, so that you're not just flying blind when you do these things and that's generally what you're going to see with a lot of bird wet feathers when they do fold up against the back um, this is going to be the shoulder area I believe this is the shoulder area where they kind of fold up um, and this will be towards the back more but yeah, definitely, um, definitely uh, take a look at photos online of birds, different types of birds, to kind of see how their wings behave, how the feathers behave. 
uh, light and shadow behave, all of it. You know, just take it in and absorb it and learn it and um, you'll definitely improve over time. I mean, it's, it's helped me a great deal and I definitely suggest it. Um, I appreciate you guys watching and um, I'll be back with more tutorials soon.